Hello and welcome back to my RC channel. I'm Andy RC and today I'm going to be checking out the GoFly Falcon CP90. Now this one for me is a competitor to the Ishin Lizard. Now it doesn't look much like the Ishin Lizard but it's a brushless micro that takes a 2 to 3 S battery and it's priced very similar to the Ishin Lizard. The only thing is though is that this one comes as a plug and fly so it doesn't come with a receiver and it doesn't come with a battery and I think it's going to struggle against the Lizard because of that it also doesn't have a cloverleaf antenna for the VTX either it's a sleeve dipole antenna that being said it does look like a nice model and it has got higher spec motors than the Lizard so these are a 1104 7500 kV motor they are running what looks like a 1.9 inch propeller but the instructions don't say the size of the propeller it just says that it can take up to a 2 inch propeller so these are the 5 blade propellers you don't get a spare set of those which is a pain but the big selling feature of this one is that it has prop protectors and it's come with these installed so the lizard doesn't have that it is a little bit heavier than the lizard though it comes in at 76 grams without a battery and the battery that i'm going to be using is the Ishin Lizard's battery. It's a 3S, 550 milliamp, and of course we've got a XT30 connect here, which is great for this sort of thing because we are powering a lot of stuff up here. So taking a look at some of the other specifications, the frame, it's actually a 95 millimeter frame despite the name. We've got a battery strap on here as well. It doesn't have a feed through, but it fits this battery fine. Just ignore all the mud. Not sure what all that's about and they have actually cut out a lot of this frame which you would think would make it weak but it's actually a very thick frame and very strong the only things that don't seem strong are these prop protectors they seem a bit weak here but they are optional they've given these motor protectors here and that is to replace these and that means that you don't have to use different sized screws for these motors so you can just take all of these off if you want and just have it as a outdoor model but I'm gonna try it with the protectors on here today because I think that's a selling point that it has so the ESC's are a 20 amp and they are BL Halley S ESC's the fly controller is a Omnibus F3 and it's flashed with a fairly old version of Beta Flight. It's version 3.1, I think, and we're on 3.17 now. So you can only use multi shot with this version of Beta Flight. So I've soldered in a little D8 receiver and it's quite easy to solder in. So we've got the signal, the 5 volt, and the ground, and we've also got a 3 volt in there as well if you want to use a spectrum receiver the only thing is you have to take it apart really to get to it so you've got two screws here on the side which I have removed and then this just sort of comes back like a bonnet or trunk or hood or whatever you want to say and yeah I've got my little receiver in there there's also a buzzer as well which is built into the flight controller which is nice we've also got two programmable LEDs on the back there as well so connected to the DIN but built into the flight controller and then on the top here this is actually the VTX so the VTX is separate it's 48 channel it's 25 milliwatt and you can see we have this antenna here as well so a little tiny button the only thing is it's quite difficult to get to that button when all of this is put back together but we've got two sets of lights one is for your channels and the other is for your bands and again it's like a long press of this button here to go through the different bands and then a short press to go through the individual channels and then we've got a separate camera up here as well just on a couple of screws there and yeah there is a lot of extra stuff 
on this so you could lose a lot of weight by taking these protectors off you could lose even more weight by removing some of this plastic here and then it looks like we've got some metal here as well maybe aluminium here holding in the ESCs and the flight controller etc so yeah it's not too bad though when it comes to the weight so I'll have to see how it flies with that. As for the other stuff that you get in the box, yeah, I already mentioned the motor protectors there. You get given these weird rubber pads. I'm not sure what that's for, maybe for the battery. We've got some instructions here as well. And it shows you how to bind it, but this is the plug and fly version. I don't think they're doing a bind and fly version now but it tells you how to do that anyways and yeah it just tells you how to set up the receiver but because I'm using a D8 receiver here it was set up for Spectrum so I've set this up as S bus I've also gone in and changed the PIDs because the PIDs were just stock PIDs and I'll take a look at those a little bit later I've switched around the on-screen display so yeah this one has beta flight on-screen display. I've changed the rates to 0.8. I've turned motor stop off because that was turned on as well and I've set up my modes so I've got arming on a two position switch and then I've set up angle, acro, acro and air. I've also set a beeper up as well on the modes. Okay let's go for a takeoff with this one starting off in angle mode Everything seems okay so far. It's a noisy thing. Let's try a punch. Wow. Yeah, loads of punch. Very similar punch to the lizard, I have to say. I think maybe the lizard has a little bit more, but this one's heavier. So if you remove these prop protectors and some of that plastic then I'm sure you can get the weight down on this one. Listen at that go though, it's so angry. I'm loving all these quadcopters with the dark theme recently. Everything black on this one except a couple of little bits of silver. See those LEDs nicely. Let's try Acro. Acro is notoriously not as good when you have prop protectors on. And that usually shows when doing Acro in forward motion rather than line of sight like this. I have to say it's feeling dialed in here. So not the stock PIDs, I changed them. This is behaving nicely. I'm not feeling any vibrations or anything like that from these props. Yeah, look at that. It's behaving itself. Apart from being antisocial. <laughs> Listen at that thing scream. Yeah, I think this is a good one, you know. It's more heavily priced than the lizard. And incomplete, you could say, with it needing a receiver and a battery you know the lizard comes with that <laughs> this one's really nice look at that oh, i'm having a lot of fun line of sight make sure i don't get too far away from myself though <laughs> Man, there's some good machines out at the moment. I have to say, this thing's feeling locked and, you know, 
Ah, uh, there we go. There goes the battery. Look at that. So, yeah, the battery died quickly. So this is using the Ishin Lizard's battery here. So, yeah, I think drawing more amps, possibly so. Yeah, fairly short flight time there. So the reason the low voltage buzzer was going off so late there is I reduced the warning level a bit low. I think I set it to 2.8 volts and this is a high C battery so it really caught me out so you might want to lift that up a little bit. It actually caught me out again on this flight because I wasn't paying attention to the voltage and the voltage drops really quickly. Yeah so only a three minute flight time with this one I do think you could get that down if you remove the prop protectors and as for the way that it flew probably one of the best with prop protectors I have to say I'll overlay my pids here they aren't completely perfect but there was no sort of pitching back and no strange movement that you tend to get when you start adding prop protectors onto models so there was none of that the picture quality and the reception really good as well considering it's a CMOS camera and using a sleeve dipole antenna I've got a cloverleaf antenna on my fat sharks there and yeah, I have to say out of all of these sort of all-in-one cameras, this one's performing pretty well, not much breakup at all and with this model a ton of power to do lots of maneuvers and things. You also notice I've got the RSSI value on there as well so I added that this particular receiver which I will link in the below. You can set that up in the on-screen display to have, I think it was channel 9 and yeah I set that up and it worked nicely range was pretty good so yeah I think in general I like this one like I say though as before I think price wise if you aren't bothered about flying it indoors and prop protectors and things I think the Lizard is a better deal but this one still has good things to offer but you're gonna have to do some soldering and some setup in beta flight as well I think I also had to change the channel map I think that was set up as AETR I'm using a Tyrannus here so yeah I set it up as TAER but other than that yeah no complaints really I think keep an eye on the price maybe as well because I imagine that it will reduce especially when they look at the other models that they are producing at a cheaper value so yeah definitely keep track of that but anyways you will see in a minute that the voltage just completely drops we're at 10 volts here which is where you should land but then look at it now all of a sudden dropping and I haven't noticed it and unfortunately I didn't get back to myself and I landed in a bunch of mud so I'll put a link in the description if you wish to get one of these as always thanks so much for watching please continue to subscribe cheers